hi guys welcome back so in today's video we will be going through the process of connecting to amazon redshift data warehouse from dp for sql client okay so let's get to it okay so like i mentioned in this video we will be going through the process of connecting to amazon redshift data warehouse from dp for sql client okay so in the previous video i went through the process of downloading and installing dp for sql client in our local environment i also did a previous video where i also went through the process of creating a uh, redshift serverless data warehouse so if you do not have those videos or if you don't have your redshift um, environment set up uh, definitely do take a look uh, into that video i'll put it in the uh, description for this video uh, as well as the dp for download and installation if you don't have it i also did a video on that the process is pretty straightforward for this uh, for amazon redshift warehouse it it, it requires some configurations uh, but i did go through in detail at the steps on how to set that one up so if you want to test out the serverless version of redshift uh, definitely uh, do take a look into that video okay but like i mentioned in this video we will be going through the process of uh connecting to redshift warehouse from dp, DP for client and the reason uh, we want to do that um, is because dp for sql client is really easy to use uh, compared to say the uh, redshift um, browser editor okay so if you have been working with sql for a long time and just love using the client version of it then uh, dpfa might be a great option for you to check out uh, and so in this video i will be walking you through the process of connecting to redshift from dpfa and this one is running locally in my environment um, but before we proceed if you are new to the channel please uh, do subscribe to the channel so that you can stay updated uh, whenever i release a similar videos all right so let's get to it um so to connect to redshift from dpfa you obviously do need to install dpfa and of course you do need redshift um data warehouse setup and um i already have those one set up so let's just go ahead and do the connection so once you have that i mean i'm just going to close dpfa so i, I can show you how to start from scratch so this one is a dpfa that is running and i'm just going to click this and, and, and close it and i'm going to launch a new uh dpfa application okay so i'm going to uh, open a new one and this is a community edition so this one is free we don't have to pay for this and once you have your db for app then to connect to redshift data warehouse you, you, all you have to do is um go to this uh, uh section here up here where it says a uh, new database connection so there are actually two ways that you can do this you can go here and just click here and it will bring you this menu here for all of the databases that you have that you can connect to or you can also go uh here uh in the database menu uh, up here in the window right so we have an, a menu here and you can click here and go to new database connection so the either of those options should work fine now dpfa can connect to a lot of databases and you have all of the lists here so if you have any database that you are using and you want to use dpfa and uh, that database is listed here uh, you can just go ahead and and, and and follow the steps it should be sp pretty straightforward uh, but in this video we will be going through the steps on how to connect to redshift um there's another video i did uh, where i went through the process of connecting to my sql uh, but again in this one we will go um, and make connection to redshift so the list is pretty long here you can scroll down and you can see that redshift is down here or you can just uh, type uh, and search here redshift okay so this should come up so just go ahead and click it and this is the window where you now put your uh, connection details so right here this is uh, so there are several tabs here we have main redshift you have driver properties ssl um ssl and ssl uh in different scenarios you can use uh, all of these options just depending on how you have set up your redshift because in some scenarios the security measures are quite strict and you may not be able to just connect uh, directly from your 
your environment so you may have to you know do some ssh or ssl but all of these options are there but i'm just going to stick to this first tab here for main and uh here i'm going to uh just connect to the host for the redshift so we do need the host name and we need the database name for this so to get this information just go back to your redshift and I, and I think I closed it so I do need to uh, log in again so <clears throat> and I'm going to go to redshift and this is my redshift dashboard so again I'm using the surplus version so I'm going to go to the namespace that I created uh, a while back and uh, for you if just select whichever one you have so I'm going to go to this dev namespace dev namespace and uh, go to the work group and that is where you find uh, or that's where you'll find the the connection details so here I have the endpoint there is also JDBC and ODBC um, you know if you are uh, using programmatically or you want to connect programmatically or uh, through any other SQL client that requires JDBC or ODBC information then you can just pick them from here I'm just going to pick the endpoint I'm going to copy that and I will just paste it here in my text editor so the the host is the whole of this uh, the whole of this up to Amazon AWS.com. So I'm going to copy that and I will go back to my dbfa and I will paste that one right here. So I'll paste the host host name here. And as you can see by default, the port number is uh, 5439. And you can also see that from the um, endpoint. So that is the same uh, port number. And then once you have that one, then the next thing is we need to put the database. Uh, you can see that there's a message here saying that if the database is not specified, then the username is used. So, you know, now if you have your username and you don't have the database uh, that matches that username, then it's going to fail. So you do need a valid database here. So let's go ahead and check uh, which database we can use in our um data warehouse so here the, the fashion i mean this is the namespace i'm using so we'll go in here and uh, we can pick any of the database here so i'm just going to pick this one for dev and we do have some tables here uh, that i created a while back okay so we'll use the dev database uh, for this so i'm just going to put here dev and then uh, now the authentication is just de database native so this means that you do need the username and password uh, and I think I, there, are, there are two options here. So I'm just going to use the first one here for database native. I will enter the name here. So this is the name that you probably set up when you are configuring uh, or setting up Redshift serverless uh, at the beginning. Or uh, it could be a name that you created after you set up your Redshift. So this should be a valid name that can connect to your data, uh, data warehouse. So for me, I have the username as admin and I'm going to enter the password here. Okay. And I will leave uh, the rest of this other info. I'll just, I will save this one and I will leave the rest of this uh, uh, as default. I'm not going to put the session name. And then after that, just to go ahead and do the test connection. So as you can see, the connection was successful for me. Uh, so that means that I'm able to connect to my Redshift now. Again, I just want to mention that um, make sure that the password is correct and the username is correct. Also, the database is correct. If any of this is not uh, correct, then it's not going to connect. And then uh, the other additional thing before we go ahead and click finish, the other additional thing that you need to make sure that uh, you have so that you are able to connect to Redshift, especially if you are connecting from your local machine, uh, and uh, this is your Redshift account. Uh, one definite thing that you do need to make <coughs> sure is that the security, uh, the, the the security group is configured to allow traffic from your local laptop. So to do that, um, if you go to your Redshift uh, work group configuration and you scroll down here, you will see under network and security 
PPC security group click that and this should bring you to the security group uh, uh, the security group section in in in, uh, in, in AWS and uh, this is a the security group that we set up when we were configuring redshift so just click that and what you need to do is go here in inbound rules and click edit and what you want to do is make sure that um, redshift is configured to accept traffic from your local machine and to do that just go ahead and uh, click the uh, you know add rule and definitely add redshift tcp and the port number and under source here where i say source do my ip so if you do my ip your ip will automatically populate here and then just go ahead and click save okay so obviously for me i'm using my ip and that's my ip right there so it's not going to detect any changes but you, once you do that uh just close it and you should be able to connect successfully so once you have that one ready you can come back now and test your connection again probably if you didn't have it open by the time you hit this connection it's going to time out because the traffic is not being accepted but immediately you open it and allow that traffic the connection should go successfully um the other additional thing that you probably will see here is the driver information um by default maybe the driver uh may not be installed or downloaded when you connect to this so the first time that you hit uh, test connection uh redshift i mean uh db will probably pop a window that says that you do need to download this additional uh driver details so that uh, redshift is configured and downloaded to your db so go ahead and do that uh, just uh, install it if it asks you to do that and once that's done just go ahead and test connection and uh it should be able to 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 work well and then once you have all of that ready then you can just go ahead and hit finish and your database uh will be uh, available here for you okay so you if we expand this uh, let me go back there if we expand this you can see now that we have our redshift um name here and uh of course you can yeah we, we named it as dev so it's it's going to go by default but you can also rename it uh, you can rename it and put it another name okay and if you expand it now uh, we should be able to uh, see the uh, database that we have in redshift right here so you can see now i'm able to see my schemas pay schema and the tables that are listed there as well uh, pay snapshot and also the rest of these other uh, schemas okay so this is the same as what we have here in redshift under that same schema okay so that is uh, this is our browser editor and uh, we can see that in our pay schema we have the same tables that we can see in our dpfa okay so you can now use dpfa to query your data warehouse so for example now we can go ahead and uh, uh just you know query this customer's table so let's just go ahead and uh, open a new SQL editor so to do that yes you know right click here and you can right click anywhere here I think even right up here in the in the database in the connection itself you can open a new script or uh, you can go to the table itself and just open a new script as well um, okay and what we can do here is just go ahead and uh, do select select star from uh we want to do dev dot pairs dot customers okay and just click run there's an execute button right here okay there we go so we can see our data and uh this is pretty neat so you can run your queries here just as normal as you will have done if you were using the browser fashion um this one is actually very good and uh, you can see a lot of detailed information for example if you were to say few tepo you can see the tepo uh, constraint foreign keys dependencies all of these things you can even check the data here uh, and er diagram if you are for example uh, if this if you had a table that was joining to multiple tables 
the ER diagram will, will show you how those tables are related, which are the keys that are being connected to each other and all of that. So this uh, this this, this, uh, this DPFA uh, tool is pretty powerful and uh, uh, definitely do try it out if you have not. Uh, it's it's really good. And again, you can connect. It's just not you know you can connect to a lot of databases um, as you can see in the list here. You can connect to MySQL, MariaDB, Oracle, Postgre, Redshift, SQL Server. There's so many of them. Uh, I think uh, it's Snowflake. You can connect to Snowflake. That's crazy. Uh, Teradata. You know all of this. I don't know if SAP is here. <laughs> Let's see Hana. Yeah, Hana is here. You can even <laughs> connect to SAP Hana. That is awesome. All right, guys. Um, that is. Oh, I see Asha Databricks. Huh? Databricks? Wow. That's that's crazy, dude. All right. Um. That is the process, guys, of connecting to a Redshift data warehouse from DPFA. Okay? I hope this video was useful. And um, please uh, give thumbs up. Uh, put your comments in the video. If there's a video you want me to make, uh, let me know in the comment section. And I will go ahead and do that. Uh, but yes, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel so that you can stay updated uh, whenever I release similar videos. Do also share the channel uh, with your friends and uh, please ask them to subscribe as well. Alright, so that is what I had for you guys today. Uh, until next time, happy coding. Uh, bye bye.